All right, so this, uh, this was recorded on uh, the 4th of July of uh, 2022. So uh, kind of a holiday weekend, didn't spend a lot of time in the garage working on the car. But uh, so what I did is I decided to, uh, to pull some pictures from uh, earlier in the project before I started doing videos um, of, the, uh, of the rebuild. Um, and uh, so I've, I've decided to pull a couple of uh, a series of pictures of me doing some body work. So this will be um, some of the body work on the uh, Nigel, the 1977 MGB. This car was uh, originally um, spent about 20 years in a um, uh, in a garage, and, or I'm sorry, in a barn, and um, uh, it had been pushed around with uh, tractors and people shoving it and pushing it and. You know, when a car gets um, uh, so that it's not working, it gets pushed around a lot. Um, and subsequently, uh, cars that get pushed around, they get a lot of uh, dents and dings and um, uh, the, the, the body work starts to suffer for it. Compound that uh, by t with time and, and water and weather and uh, it's just a recipe for rust and deterioration. Uh, so let's get started. All right, so first thing I want to talk about is uh, the rear fender. This, uh, this rear fender had been uh, tucked under and bent, um, and uh, when it got bent, it got creased as well. Uh, fenders have a little uh, angle on, on the corners of them to keep them rigid. Uh, otherwise, it would just be a piece of metal flapping in the wind. Uh, that little piece of metal, uh, when it gets bent, it'll tear, uh, and, it'll, and in this case, you can see it tore into the metal a ways um, and I got my ground strap on, ready to weld it. Uh, so we banged it out with a little ball peen and a, I have a, a flat hammer that I use as a, a, a kind of a portable anvil and we flattened it out the best we could to re reform the shape. This is the, um, uh, the underside right here. You can see this is the crease and this is that, remember I was talking about there's like a, a, little, a little bend in it so that it keeps it rigid. And when that gets split, then it'll tear the metal. Uh, here is uh, after initial welding. Uh, you know, once you weld it, you got to get all the flack off of it and get it nice and clean. Uh, and then um, before you get ready to bond to it, you have to uh, uh, rough up the material so that the bondo will stick to the metal. Um, and here I am putting the bondo on there. With the bondo, this is uh, you don't want to you don't want to go too heavy, but you don't want to go too light. Um, you want to be able to get a nice layer on there so that you can you can rough it up. Um, and then shave it down with a rough, with rough sandpaper. I use uh, uh, somewhere between 80 and 40 grit during the first the first pass through, um, and it will deform. It'll sh it'll it'll uh, shrink and change shape. Uh, so you have to do a couple layers anyway. But um, when you're doing this first one, it's really rough. And here's the uh, sanding after the first rough cut here. I can see it's taken a nice shape. That the tear is gone. You can't see the weld at all. It's it's, it's back into into shape the way it's supposed to look. Uh, so moving on to the hood, um, like I was saying, when cars get moved around a lot when they don't run, the people push them in different places. And this is uh, this is what happened in 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 this case. And you see, I've I've seen uh, other MGs with this same thing. This this little bump in the hood is a nice logical place to put your hand when you're shoving it around, and Subsequently, you get these creases right in here, um, and unfortunately, when you crease the metal, it stretches, it stresses it. So uh, you can't just hammer it out. Um, this right here is a, uh, um, a a PDR device. You can see we use a little bit of hot glue in here, um, and then you just um, put these little pads on, and then this this little screw here will pull it up. And all we're trying to do here is uh, uh, re reform the metal without banging on it and stressing it and stretching it out uh, as best we can. You're not going to get 100%. This area in the front right here, there's no way that you're going to pull that out with doing more damage. Uh, so all you can do is grind that and put bo uh, Bondo in there, put some putty in there to make it flush. Uh, here's another example of uh, the PDR work. Um, and this, this car had been painted once before. Um, the the decal was left on for the last for the second paint job and so the paint was taped at the decal and so there's more layers of paint um, above the, and than there are below the decal so when we took the decal off 
it had ridges so we ended up having to sand all that paint off so that uh, it all match the uh, the hood back on the on the the bonnet or the hood this uh, um, this corner here that had so much rust on it that it uh, the the weld had broken away uh, so uh, I supplemented that with another weld and then just ground it down into shape uh, here you can see uh, after doing the PDR getting ready to do the bondo we rough up the material so that it can take the uh, you got good metal contact it's good rough metal um, you don't see on here but I did a little more hammer work on this to get this crease down that, that's one of the reasons why you start sanding things to try to find the high and the low spots so here's the first coat of bondo uh, you can see um, just running with a putty it's just a real easy putty putty work and you just put it on as best you can and try to get the shaping as well as you can before it gets firm and then you sand it down uh, once you get it sanded you can see the high and the low spots and where the where the the metal sticks and the and the and the putty um, uh, gives way you have to kind of be careful with this you gotta, you gotta use a block to make sure you don't make any low spots uh, the metal obviously doesn't sand as easy as the bondo so it's real easy if you're, if you're not using a block to sand more on the bondo than you are in the metal and uh, here's a first first spray with uh, w um, some primer now this is primer filler and the idea behind this is really just get an idea of the shape um, we went in and did a lot more uh, detail sanding and um, I, I didn't want to go too far into paint prep and stuff but this is just about the body work getting it back into shape but you can see this looks a whole lot better than before with those creases in the corners up here. Um, and so that came out really well. All right, so here's a better look at that, uh, um, the de decal coming off. Um, if you have a decal and you want to take it off, um, I want you to learn from me because <laughs> it's a pain in the butt. Um, definitely get yourself a heat gun and pull the decal off now when you do that you can see it leaves behind it the um, this uh, the glue the adhesive from the decal but um, you don't want to sand it with uh, with the decal on there because it just loads up your sandpaper you go through a lot of sandpaper and you end up uh, doing a lot more body work than you have to so use a heat gun and remove the vinyl before you go in and start cleaning up this uh, this glue um, with sandpaper. You're, uh, you're going to have to do some sanding if you take the decal off, uh, especially if it's as old as this. But uh, this, the heat gun was, a, was what, what you need to learn from me on. <laughs> if you don't have a heat gun, it's going to be a pain in the butt. Uh, there's, uh, we, we tried a couple of different things with uh, a wire wheel. We tried uh, you know, heavy, heavy grade sandpaper. It just there's no way that you can get that without the heat gun. All right, so uh, this is kind of a tricky one here. This uh, little rust spot um, didn't look so bad initially, but when you start poking it with a, with a screwdriver, it, you can see it was really, there was a lot of voids in here. So um, we decided to go ahead and cut this out. And um, when we cut it out, it revealed that there was also a lot of rust underneath uh, in the second layer. Um, and so we decided, there it is, there's some more rust down in here. We're going to cut that out too. And you know, the more you cut, the more you find. In order to get a good weld when you're doing these patches, you need to make sure that you have um, a, a good material to weld onto. When you start finding rust and you poke it out and um, you try to, to weld onto a rusty surface, even if it's rusty on the backside, that rust really all that means is that the metal itself is really thin uh, and so the first time you put a, 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 a welding uh, bead on there it'll blow right through uh, so you, you need to get a really good surface a really good mating surface in order to get a good weld and that's what we're trying to do here we're trying to trying to find out how much we have to remove so we can get a good clean uh, mating surface for welding so it just kept getting bigger cut more away cut more away and then um, when I started to sand it I found that there was some bondo up here from a prior job and somebody just shoved bondo into the hole um, and they didn't use any kind of backer or anything they just shoved some bondo in there uh, so guess what that's gonna get cut out too you can see here I've already cut it out 
Um, the next thing here is, um, you know, there's there's a lot of topical rust in there, and so I decided to treat that with uh, Ultra Converter. I, I, when I put the the new, the new patch on here, that rust is still active, and it's gonna it's gonna work from the inside out. So you can see I've got a toothbrush here. I'm actually reaching into the back as far as I can to um, to get this rust converter on the back side of that material so that it doesn't rust after I patch it. Uh, here I am uh, fitting the patch for the inside patch. Uh, and you know when you have these, when you, you're cutting with uh, um, an, angle, uh, uh, an angle grinder, it, it does get a little messy and you can make a little cut but you don't have to worry about those because you can just run a bead of weld in there and it will straighten it out. Here's a profile view. You can see it's not just a flat surface, it's a profile with a bit of a, dent, uh, a bend in it. And so you have to keep going back and forth. Now, this is really not that hard because in this case, it's a two-dimensional, it's only, it's only bent in one direction. So it's a lot easier to, to form the metal in, in this case. Um, and here you can see it's a good example. This, this is the final cutout up in here. I had to take a bunch of stuff out here because of that pre previous Bondo job and I decided to go ahead and cut all the way to here. And um, This is where I decided that I'm going to go ahead and fill these grooves because I instead of welding to this bad surface I decided to weld to the the good surface on this side. Um, and so here I've uh, made a paper cutout of the, uh, uh, the the area that I intend to uh, to replace with metal and um, uh, laying it out to describe it onto uh, the replacement material that I'm going to use. And this is an example of uh, using a template but cutting it thick wider. Um, so there's a couple things that's going to happen here. First of all, if you cut it too small, you can't put the metal back. You're going to end up welding all over the place, right? You need to get it just a little bit bigger than it needs to be. Uh, and so this kind of just shows you the margin that I let I set myself, um, and I intend to uh, uh, to you know, use the the the, sh the shearing snips and just clip a little bit of time, a little bit at a time until I get it just right. Um, but uh, that's that's really what this picture is all about. Here's an example of what I use to bend it. Um, so I have a I have a log that I use for these kinds of things. Um, but you know you can just use uh, any any piece of wood. It I, I have this log and it's really really um, really helpful because the end grain um, doesn't dent. Uh, it stays nice and flat even after you hit it. It rebounds well. Um, but it, it do, when you're bending the metal on a piece of wood as opposed to uh, an anvil or another harder surface, uh, the metal doesn't squish. Um, it doesn't flatten out and deform. Uh, it'll just bend really nice. So. Um, that's that's kind of what the I'm trying to demonstrate here is to use a piece of wood rather than a hard surface or an anvil to, to shape your metal. So here you can see I've got this one in the back the back patch is kind of hideous, but it doesn't have to be ground down too much. It's just going to get um, uh, sealed up with uh, uh, the rust sealer before, and then I'm going to just patch over the top of it, so I don't have to worry about grinding that that much. But um, this is a rough example of what it's going to look like when it goes in, and um, here's a, a little bit better better view of it. You can see I and I, I bent it a little bit more, just trying to make it match up really well. It's a profile view of uh, of of the sill patch. This part here will go in the bottom, um, and it, it it'll instead of uh, being um, butt welded down here, I'm actually going to drill a couple of small holes. And do a tack weld in this in this area right in here. Here you can see I've done a done some small holes here and tack weld those in, and that matches up right along this line. It just goes right along. See how that works out? Uh, that matched up really well. And then this line right here is where that crease continues, and the weld goes off into um, a instead of welding into that bad metal in there I decided just to, to bridge that gap and weld it onto this side right here. Now this is not a real pretty weld um, and you'll find a lot of these welds when you're when you're patching um, you know rust spots uh, you can't run a bead you have to go tack 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 because you can't get it that hot um, you have to really control the temperature uh, and when you're tacking like that it, it just really makes kind of a, um, a stitch work of, of welds 
um, but not to worry because you'll put some Bondo on it and it will look just great. Alright, so here's another one of the modifications that we did on the uh, on the bodywork. Normally you'd see a little like a little channel right here, uh, but we ground that down. I'll show you a picture real quick. Uh, we ground that down and uh, bonded it and made it look seamless. Now, you might think, you're, well, what if I ever need to take the fender off? Well, you know what? If you have to take the fender off, you're going to do body work anyway. So um, we, we went ahead and did that so that uh, it would look a lot smoother. I really like the, the way it, it blends nicely with the lines right there uh, instead of having that, uh, that gutter that they put in there. Um, we also uh, we did the same thing on the back. Right back here, normally there's a there's a seam that goes right here. We bonded over that on um, this rear fender right here. And uh, also, uh, from where we did the welding, um, we uh, there's normally there's a little seam that goes right through here where water can come out from the from the grill. Well, guess what? The water can come out anyway. <laughs> uh, it just won't get trapped in there and cause any more rust. Um, so we did it on both sides. This is the opposite side here, but uh, you get the idea. The uh, um, the seams that break up the body lines have all been uh, bondoed and patched um, and painted over, uh, just to make it a little more sleek, a little more uh, a little more classy lines. All right, so that should be a good example of uh, some of the body work that we did. Um, Check back again next week. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm hoping to get the pedal box in uh, so we can get that, um, get that going, get the, uh, um, the, the brake boost and uh, start working on, on the pedal box. Once I get all that in, then we'll put the engine in. But uh, there's a logic, logical progression to uh, all the different assembly pieces if you want to get it all done right and keep it clean while you're going. Um, so make sure you subscribe, and if you have any comments or anything, please do comment. Uh, it's very helpful, not only for myself, but other people who are uh, watching the channel uh, to answer whatever questions that they may have. If you have a question, go ahead and throw it in there. I'm sure if I can't help out, someone else will be able to help you out. Uh, but there you go. Uh, see you next week.